Buenos dias. Buenos dias. How are you? You ready? Ready? Glad you made it. I'm about to get me some tea started. I'm not gonna take y'all up too much though. Let that steep a little bit more. Let that steep a little bit more. Hey. Hey. Thank you for joining. Let that tea steep a little more. We got stuff to do. Y'all joining me for the first time, thank you. If you're joining me from multiple times, just, you've been here more than once, then you know we're going through a 14 day or 14 video series of breaking habitual patterns. Yesterday we did victimhood. If you're a person that finds yourself always saying, why me? You may need to go watch Victimhood. So we're going to do another one today. We're almost getting near the end of these things. I'll be finishing the rest of them off in Minnesota. Because I'll be in Minnesota. Sunday, Monday. Monday, Tuesday. No. Mon whenever the first is. Whenever the first is. I'll be gone. Cool. Yes, yeah, so. I'll be uh doing that. All right. And we'll be you drinking your tea? Cinnamon. Oh, I'm glad you got tea. So we're going to get started here. Just give me a minute. Let me get my tea. And we're going to talk about some of these issues. Now that that's steeped a little more. I like this little color to my tea. Oh! Freak, that's hot. Think we're going back to deep in depths into God videos. Oh, I bet you felt like that when we get ready to do, huh? Deeper into God videos. 
No, no, no. No, we're not doing that. We're staying right here. We're staying right here, buddy. Let me get out of the way of that. That 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 magic back there. Alright. Let's breathe. Ready? Let's breathe for a little bit. Let's do a let's 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 do a little exercise. Okay? Sitting down, you relax, back up straight if you're sitting. If you're laying down, that's cool. Lay out all the way, stretched out. And let's breathe. coming up out of the water, out of deep, like you just got done coming from up out of an ocean, you just, you were down beneath the water, and then you surface back to the top, and, and I want you to take that life, that breath, that, that, that breath that you take in, that's life, so I want you to take in that kind of a breath, like you've been submerged underwater, but I want you to do it, and when you do it, you, you'll notice that when you breathe from being submerged in water, you breathe from your diaphragm. You take a <gasps> big gulp of air in from here, your diaphragm. That is the life that we take in. It's a big, fresh life breathing, life force of air, of oxygen. And so we want to take in that kind of life Let's do it again, let's breathe. Inhale. Exhale. There is so much around you. I'm just going to do this exercise real quick because the topic I'm about to break down to you is needed. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in through the nose. And breathing out through the mouth. And so there's a lot of communication going on around you. A lot of topics, a lot of talk, a lot of discussion, a lot of a negative energy being put out there. And I want you to know that regardless that if you are tuned in and I want you to be here with me in the present, in this meditation, real quick, quick exercise. In this meditation, you're engaged in all these topics and conversation words around you. Not that you are conversating or holding the conversation, but you're hearing all of these words being thrown around you because of 10, 15, 20 different people around you having their own personal conversations and you're just caught in the middle of it. Like you're right in the center of 20 different people having 20 different conversations but you can't really make out <clears throat> what's being said because you're not tuned in. 
but it's somewhat affecting you. It's affecting you. It's affecting you. And you recognize this thing that's affecting you, this energy. And I want you to believe and know as you continue to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth that we over communicate a lot sometimes what's being said. <clears throat> and sometimes the words that are being said, we give our own narrative to them. And so I don't want you to awaken from your present being creating narratives around discussions that's happening around you because then we begin to tell ourselves that the story and the belief that people are talking about you even though you can't hear what they're saying you believe people are talking about you and this has been you. You found yourself in the midst of a lot of conversations where people have conversations. Someone may glance at you and you think that whatever that conversation is over there, they're talking about me. And you're over communicating a lot of what's not being said. So we don't want to do that. What we want to do is awaken in this state. Awaken in this present being. Knowing that I create, you create the narrative around the words that's coming in and not allowing the narrative to create a thinking within your mind and not allowing the words be the narrative to create a thinking or over communicate a process of emotions in your being, in your mind, in your awareness. This is why we feel uneasy when we get into spaces where we can own and master the space that we're in. We can own and master the space that we're in, but we get uneasy and unsettled and uncomfortable in spaces because we allow the words that are being said to create the narrative and we begin to over communicate what's not being said. So we're going to master this over communication today. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in one more time. Through the nose. Kind of like you're resurfacing from out of the water. Make it, make it as if you're coming up out of water. Taking that fresh life. Breathe in, hold it for four seconds. One, two, put a smile on your face with it. Three, four. <laughs> Release that breath. You are loved. Ah, yes, you are loved. You are loved. Tone, welcome everybody. It is your luminary, your spiritual luminary, Omaka the Light. I am here to bring you another, yes, breaking out, uh, not breaking out. Mm. I always want to promote the book, right? This is breaking out, Escape the Fear of Failure. This is my book, but what I'm here to promote is not, well, yeah, the book, but a, a series that is inspired by the book called Breaking Habitual Patterns. So we're going to break habitual patterns today. And I want to welcome everybody in the room. Thank you for being here. And we're going to break habitual patterns today. Okay? And the way we do that is learning what are the patterns. Hey, African princess. That's my daughter, y'all. That's my, that's my little daughter right there. <laughs> African princess. Um, so the way we, the way we do 
that or do this. The way we break habitual patterns is by removing ourselves from the things that begin to process within our minds. I can't wait to tell y'all my good news. I can't wait to tell y'all my good news. I've been teasing y'all for a couple of days now, but I'm not going to tell y'all yet. Huh? I'm not going to tell y'all yet. So what's the what's the name of today's uh, a pattern that we're breaking, y'all? Who knows? Huh? What's the name of today's pattern? How to stop over-communicating your thoughts. Over-communication. We got to deal with this. We got to deal with this. We got to deal with this. All right? So if you got your pens and your pads and your notes ready, let's begin. We got to stop over-communicating our thoughts. Now, I'm going to read because I got notes because this series is too important to just go off the cuff with. And I can, but we're not here to do that. We're here to actually get some real value from what I'm doing. And this this here, I'm giving y'all nothing but nuggets. You dig what I'm saying? So I can't really allow myself to not be fully engaged with the message or with the knowledge or with the information. I got to go all the way in. So, listen. How many times have you told yourself something? How many times have you told yourself something but but then told yourself that's not true that's over communication you tell yourself something and then you say no that's not true that's over communication you you over communicating and and I'm gonna tell you what else over communicating is how many times have you had a conversation with someone huh and you start creating a narrative about the story the person is telling you or about the person. I find myself doing this. You start to tell yourself, oh, this type, oh, I see, I, oh, I know your type. This is when you say that. Oh, I know the type, I, I, I don't, that's not my type or I know his type. See, you, you can't, you can't give everyone the narrative that you gave someone who you thought was the type of somebody else. And so you'll say, I know her type. I know his type. I don't like their type. And you're creating a narrative to someone that you don't know. You don't know their type. Because everybody is different. Everybody is an individual. There is no... We're like snowflakes. There is no one... There is no... set. There, every snowflake is different. There is no one same snowflake. There is, everyone is different. Every snowflake is different. Every snowflake is different. So there is no one, there is no one puzzle or no one shape or no one piece to everyone. Everyone is different. Everyone is an individual in their own right. And so you'll say, you've done this, you had conversation with somebody and you begin to create the narrative. You you start to say, oh, I already know how you are. Or I already know your type. And so when you say I already know how you are or I, I know his type, you begin to, that's the narrative being created. You're over communicating something that's not said, something that's not true, something that's not really right. You understand what I'm saying? And you start to lose out on more than you could be gaining on. You notice that? Let me tell you something. Lots of times people lose out on more than what they could be gaining more of. They lose out on more because they talk them, <clears throat> they talk themselves out of it. They talk themselves out of certain things and they think that it's just too good to be true or it's not for them or they're not the type or nothing good ever happens to This is when you start saying things like nothing good ever happens to me. You creating a narrative. You're over communicating what's not true. Nothing good ever. I I I don't play the lottery because I never. I don't buy scratch offs because I never win. Thank you for cementing that in the universe now. 
Thank you for cementing that in the universe. Am I saying go play lottos and scratch offs? Nah. But you can't say every time you buy a scratch off, you don't win. Because you haven't bought the winning scratch off yet. It doesn't mean you don't win every time you buy a scratch off. It just means you haven't bought the winning scratch off. Because the winning scratch off is out there. And so you're creating a false, that's creating a false narrative. Because the fact is, there are winning scratch offs out there. There are winning scratch offs out there. So you're over communicating something that's not true. I never win the lottery. I never, I never, I never win when I buy scratch offs. That's creating a false narrative. No matter how you slice it, that's a false narrative. Why? Because there are winning scratch offs out there. But you over communicate to yourself and you create a narrative and you say, nothing good ever happens to me. I never win. I know his type. And you start to communicate, over communicate what's not true. What's not true? You feel me? You start to communicate what's not true. Over communicate. Because you start to over communicate things that hasn't happened. How many times have you looked into a situation? Or was listening to someone or listening to who? I don't even know what the heck I wrote. I can't even understand my own handwriting right here. How many times have you looked into a situation or was listening to one? That's what it is. I be forgetting my quotations and commas and apostrophes. How many times have you looked into a situation or was listening to one and, 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 and you add in your opinion or advice or you add in your two cents. So let me say that again. How many times you listen to a situation or, you know, you looked into one and you give your two cents, your advice or your opinion to it. Anything wrong with lending advice, lending opinion, lending um, you know, some type of two cents. Nothing really wrong with that. People do it all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you you can overdo it. Sometimes you don't even know what to say, when to say it. And so you say nothing when you say a lot. You, you, you're saying nothing when you're saying a lot. I've been in... I've had conversations with people that they really don't be saying anything. It's like, what are you saying? Like, what what kind of conversation are we having here? And so, why do people do that? Why do people do that? And here's the reason. And here's the reason I see people do that. Here's the reason why I see people do that all the time. For the lack of importance, people begin to feel that their life has no importance to it or that they add no importance in life. People begin to see this and they begin to think that they begin to think that if their life has no importance to it, they see that, okay, I don't have any importance. My life has no importance. Once they begin to see this, then they begin to think that they don't have a place where they belong. I was kind of stuck because I was thinking of something else. For the lack of importance, people feel like they have no group that where they belong and what they say adds value. I'm going to say that again. People feel when they add their two cents or they adding in ill-advised things or they're adding in unasked for opinions, 
people are over communicating things that don't need to be said because of a lack of importance. And that's because you feel like you have no place where you belong. Where as far as in a group, you have value. Like if you feel like you belong to a certain group, you believe that people value what you say or people value what you what you what you think or people value what you do or people value your life and and people don't have a place where they belong not just in a group of people but within themselves they have a lack of importance within themselves and so therefore they over communicate in conversations or say things that doesn't need to be said or add ill advised comments or statements and 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 give two cents that's not asked for because of a lack of importance they feel like this is where they are important at or this is where their opinions would be valued at nothing wrong with giving your opinion nothing wrong with adding your two cents nothing wrong with giving your nothing wrong with any of that beloved but there is a there's something wrong when you do it and you do it out of i feel like i need to say something or i feel like i can contribute or i feel like i can add when you, you, the conversation is not calling for you to communicate in that way or add that kind of a statement. And I, I, I tell you what, I have a, I've had conversations with people where other people would be standing around, and the other person could not relate, and so they jump in and change the subject. We be talking about something where we're vibing. Did y'all see the game last night? What? You know, when, that's when you feel a lack of importance. Because you feel like you cannot relate. And just because you cannot relate to the topic or the conversation that's being had, doesn't mean you need to jump in and talk because you feel like you're unimportant in the conversation. You're, you don't have anything to add to the conversation. You can't relate to those that lingo. And so you feel like you got to get in so you can be heard and you can be value because here's a topic that you're that you, you you you're capable of having here's a topic you're capable of having so you jump in changing the subject you saw the game last night which one oh yeah this one uh, yeah yeah man what's wrong with him man he can't throw the ball man he see it happen all the time i see it happen all the time and that's because you over communicate uh and you throw in ill-advised statements or ill-advised opinions or ill-advised two cents because you feel a lack of importance. And we ain't even taking off the mask yet. Uh, the, the, people do this for the lack of importance, for the lack of significance, for the lack of self-confidence, for the lack of self-awareness, and for the lack of value. For the lack of value. For the lack of self-awareness. For the lack of value. And the lack of self-awareness. How many times have you seen this happen? This happens a lot. This happens a lot. The lack of importance, the lack of significance, the lack of self-confidence, the lack of self-awareness, and the lack of value. This is what people begin to display. So they over-communicate, they start to tell themselves things, and they start to talk, 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 talk. And they start to ah, 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 open and blah, 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 speak and... It's not needed. It's not needed. People who over communicate do so for the lack of value. Let's take off the mask. But before we do that, we're going to be going through this quick, y'all. We ain't going to even be here long. I say that all the time, right? But it never happens. Take a tea break. Take a breather. I haven't even taken off the mask and I already dug into your butt. 
for the lack of importance, self-confidence. Take a breather. Take a moment, take a tea break, take a sip of something. Taking a commercial break. where we at today okay take a breather before we go into this Commercial break. Breathe in. In through the nose. Let it rise. Keep rising it. Let it expand. Let it sit now. Holding it for four seconds. Three, four, release. Inhale again. Let it rise. Let it expand. Let it sit. Let that light come on inside you. That joy, that smile, that good, that lovely, that beautiful, that wonder, that peace, that inner stillness of greatness and purpose high vibration release it hit play on your life and let it just play through don't hit fast forward don't hit rewind hit play when we hit play, we're just allowing the song to play out. Taking off the mask of how to stop over communicating your thoughts. Let's do this by first looking at how we can take off the mask. Okay? So let's do that. Let's take off the mask. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Thank you for joining everyone who's joining me. 
Here we go. We got to heal these problems, right? So we got to start doing, taking off the mask, face the truth, heal the matter. Over communicating is you believing. This is taking off the mask. We're taking off the mask so we can be real with ourselves. Over communicating is you believing or not believing only that what has been told to you or shown to you because your lack of value begins to create shortages in your life or in your thoughts. What's a shortage? A disconnect. Let me say that again. Over communicating is you believing or not believing only that what has been shown to you or told to you. Your lack of value begins to create shortages in your life or in your thoughts. When you over communicate, it's because you have a lack of importance. You feel like when you over communicate, you're adding in things or creating narratives because you feel like things can't just be the way that they are. And so you begin to create shortages in your thoughts and in your life because you because you start over communicating and you over communicate uh, over communicating is you believing or not believing only that what has been shown to you or told to you and so you can't you it's hard for you to deal with what has been shown or told to you and it's hard for you to deal with that because guess what Whatever is, you know the saying, it is what it is. What has been shown to you is what it is. What has been told to you is what it is. It should have no bearing on you. Your value, you should have more self-importance to value the thoughts and what you tell yourself. You should have more self-importance and you should put more importance on you. So that you give you more value. You give what you say, what you believe, what you think more weight, more validity. What you believe, what you've seen, what's been told to you. You create the narrative from what you've seen, what you believe, and, and give yourself value. Don't allow someone who tells you something or someone who shows you something, don't allow that to be the narrative. Don't allow that to be the narrative. Go by what has been shown to you or told to you and let that be what it is. Meaning, let it stay as it is. Don't over communicate by adding, well, why, why, why? Sometimes you don't have to ask why. Why ask why? Why ask why? We don't always have to ask why to a thing. Why do you need to know that? Why? So you can, so you can, so you can feel more important or less important because whatever I tell you may hurt your feelings or it may over boost your ego and give you more ego than you already have or need. And so what, why not just go with what someone says? Instead of creating a narrative. If someone is lying, let that be what it is. What does someone lying to you have to do with them? Have to do with you? And unless you feel a lack of self-importance. There's no value. You say, look, I value, if, if I feel like you're lying to me. I value myself enough to say, I'm not going to believe a word you say. And, and if I can't believe you, I can't trust you. If I can't trust you, I don't need you my, around me. I don't need you around me. And that's just how it goes. You understand? If someone is lying, that has nothing to... You know, Les Brown, I always quote Les Brown. He's a motivational speaker. One of my favorite ones. And he said, he quoted this. Um, what, what you say about me is none of my spiritual business. What you say about me or what you think about me is none of my spiritual business. That has nothing to do with who I am in, in my spirit. That has nothing to do with how how still I am within myself. That has nothing to do with who I know. See, I'm not about... Here's what I'm not about to do. Allow you... I'm not about to over-communicate something to me. 
to allow me to be misplaced and out of and out of step with myself. And this is why people get uneasy and, and bothered so easily. Because someone tells you something, you just can't take that and let that be what it is, regardless of if they're lying to you or not. It has nothing, it's none of your spiritual business. If that person is lying to you, that's none of your spiritual business. And if it is any of your spiritual business, then you need to go work on your spirit more and fortify yourself in your truth. You need to go work on your spirit more and fortify yourself in your truth. Because what someone says about me or thinks about me is none of my spiritual business. I don't care what he says. I don't care what she thinks. So what? That's them. That's theirs. That's not mine. See, I'm not about to over communicate something to me. If I feel from what you showed me, from what you told me, if I feel, if I feel that there is no, that there is no truth or you're not being real or you're not being uh, um, authentic with me, then I can't believe, I can't believe you. And if I can't believe things you say or do, then I can't trust you. And if I can't trust you, then what else is there for you to be around me? What else is there? What other need is there for you to be in my life? If I can't trust you, if I can't believe you, if I can't believe you, I can't trust you. If I can't trust you, I don't need you. Period. Because what I'm not about to do is misplace who I am spiritually. I'm not about to over communicate. I think she's lying and then go through a whole investigation on that. Uh uh. No, I'm not about to do all that. I'm not about to investigate. I'm not about to investigate. If that's who you are and I believe that, then I'm just going to separate myself. I'm not about to change the narrative on my life. I'm not about to change the story on me. I'm not about to change the story in who I am. Regardless of who you are, you're the liar. That's who you are. You're a liar. That's who you are. That's not who I am. That has nothing to do with my spiritual business. That's none of my spiritual business. So you know what I'm doing? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to allow you to unravel on your own. If you're lying, you're lying. You're going to unravel. You understand? But it's not going to misplace my importance. I'm not going to start changing up the importance. Why is she doing this or why is he doing that? What, what am I not someone that has been real with this person? Listen. I had to learn through a series of partnerships and friendships that I've had with people in the past that wanted to work with me. And they use me, they use my likeness, and they use my energy and my time and 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 just basically use me up and got what they needed. And I had to learn through processes like that that I have to fortify myself in a different way. Because if I allow that to continue to go on and happen, then guess what? I start to lose the value within myself. I start to see no value in myself because people are coming in and basically talking for me, telling me what to do or giving me their advice and thinking that I need to listen to it. And if I begin to take other people's advice or guidance and stuff like that, and if I don't have any self-importance, then I'm not going to have any value, self-value. I'm not going to have self-worth. I'm not going to value myself. So I Therefore, I won't have any self-worth. And I'm telling you here, the reason why I don't, the reason why I don't put myself, the reason why I don't put myself uh, uh, in, in situations to investigate someone and what they're telling me or investigate the truth, I'm not about to investigate the truth. Uh, uh, unless, you're st unless you're stealing from me or something like that. And, and I gotta find out that you're, and I gotta go and find out that you're stealing from me. But I'm talking about as far as what people communicate. People communicate something to me. It is what it is. I leave it as it is. I had to learn to fortify myself through a, a series of people that did this to me, and I found myself unraveling more in 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 a, in, in lack of self worth, in lack of uh, self awareness, and lack of self confidence. I found myself unraveling more like, damn, I'll never make it as a speaker or I'll never make it as an author because people are using my likeness to gain attention and to gain to gain awareness for themselves, to gain some type of validity for themselves. And they use me to get around people, to take the people from around me and, 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 and therefore 
I myself felt like I had no value. I had no work because they would come around me, take people from around me, and basically take the people that's around me and either pay them more or and that's not, nothing wrong with getting paid more, but taking them around me virtually meaning that now this they're taking this person's energy who I was helping or needing or partnering with. Now this person's energy is more focused and away from what we were doing, what we were building, what we were getting ready to create. And I've seen this happen and I had to start to go through the motions like, I started over communicating. I started telling myself, man, I'm not good enough because if I'd have had this, they wouldn't have never went over there with her. If I'd have had this, they would have never did this with him. And if I'd have had that, and if I was this or I needed a degree, and if I had the degree, I could have been able to speak at that event. Or if I had the, 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 the paperwork, I would have been able to get that place or that building or whatever. I started over communicating. I started to find me feelings a lack of self I started to find me feeling a lack of self worth I, I had no value I was like uh uh I had to fortify myself I had to say everything is as it is so what somebody tells me what somebody does if I see from what you tell me from what you show me and if I feel like okay I don't believe that if I can't believe you, I can't trust you. If I can't trust you, I don't need you. And therefore, I fortify myself. I add more value to myself. I have more self-worth, self-confidence. I believe in me more. I start to communicate that narrative. And I start to say to myself, listen, you are not about to misplace me. I'm, you know, from my from my spirit. What you think about me, say about me, do to me, uh, 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 or think you're doing to me is none of my spiritual business, beloved. Guess what? I'm going to be good. Because I know who I am. I don't go by what you think I am, what you say I am. I don't over communicate your thoughts to me. I don't over communicate what you say and what you do. I communicate to me what's needed to be said to me to stay who I am spiritually fortified in that way. If you lying, you lying. That has nothing to do with me. I don't care if you lie to me. I don't care if you lie to me. It has none, It's none of my spiritual business. I don't care if you lie to me. You can lie to me all you want because the, the in, because the narrative writes itself. I don't have to create, is she lying to me? Is he lying to me? I got to go and investigate and find out. Nuh-uh. I got more self-worth than that. I got more, I got more sense. I got more confidence in myself than that. I got more value. I value myself more. If you lie to me, you lie to me. And my spirit will reveal that. The spirit will reveal that. I will see it. And I will realize, man, I can't trust this person. I say, I can't trust this person or I don't believe this person. And if I don't believe you, I don't trust you. If I don't trust you, I don't need you. So therefore, if you're lying to me, you're only going to walk yourself out the door of my life. I don't know about anybody else, but you're only walking yourself out the door of my life. If you're doing something that goes against my spiritual fortification you, you're going to walk yourself out the door so that's what that's just taking off the mask you understand you're over communicating is you believing or not believing only that what has been told or shown to you you lack your lack of value begins to create shortages in your life or in your thoughts shortages is disconnects you start to you start to say things you start to disconnect from yourself. You start to say things how you're not worthy or you you know you're not good enough and you start to disconnect. Shortages, you start to create shortages in your thoughts. So there's a disconnect from what is real. It's a disconnect from what you feel. It's a disconnect from what you know. That's what a shortage is. From what you see. And so you begin to over communicate more rather than settling for less rather rather than settling for less than because you think more than means adding more value you think sometimes you think more is better when less is more you think more is better when truthfully less is more sometimes a man don't want all the sex you offer him Sometimes a man don't want all that. Want four, five. Sometimes a man don't want it four, five times a night. 
Sometimes a woman don't want it four or five times a night. I come to find out women are more freakier and hornier than men. <laughs> come to realize this. Men act like men act more openly about theirs in the streets. Women are more discreet about theirs in the sheets. That's just how it is. Okay? But less is more. One good, you know, session. One good session. You know what I'm saying? One good, one good, you know, session with your lover, with your partner, with your mate, with your friend, with your, with your wife, with your woman, whoever. One good session. That could be all you need. I'm just saying that could be the the the, the catastrophic, cataclysmic, orgasmic. <laughs> thing that you need one good session is good enough less is more sometimes you want to go more and more and more and more and more like jackrabbits and thinking that go, being like jackrabbits and then all of a sudden you got no energy you drain and man I want to be able to sit up and eat some popcorn out there and watch a movie and maybe smoke a hookah or something you dead I mean I'm just saying you dead I might want to you know what I'm saying I need some energy I got to conserve I gotta conserve. I'm a conservationist, baby. I gotta conserve some energy. I'm a conservationist, you know. I like to conserve my energy. I like to conserve things, man. I went off on a tangent, but that's okay. So you over so you begin to overcommunicate more than rather than settling for less than because you think more than means adding more value. To you and what you say when less is more and and you and you save and when less is more and therefore you save you save face you save embarrassment um you save your pride and you know there's a uh, there's a scripture and I think Proverbs I read that says a fool um speaks um in all his folly in all of his folly ways when a fool speaks. You know, he's doing too much. He's over. Sometimes a fool, when they open their mouth, that's adding, that's over communicating. The scripture was saying, basically, you're saying too much. You don't need to say nothing at all. That's when you're a fool. You know, you, 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 you embarrass yourself and your pride gets hurt. Because you speak, uh, you, you, uh, it says a fool speaks in all of his folly ways. You know understand what I'm saying? And so you begin to add in things that don't need to be added in, thus redeeming yourself a fool. Saying things that don't need to be said. Speaking things that don't need to be spoken. Stop being a fool. Stop being uh, uh, stop giving energy that don't need to be given. Stop over communicating. You don't need to over communicate everything every time. Stop over communicating. You feel me? I forgot to put over over communicating as a topic in the comment and pin it. But we're almost done now. Facing the truth is, let's face the truth. You have to learn to know when you are valued. Where you are valued. Most people get on a phone and Offer way too much. You offer more than is required. And you feel yourself doing more or going broke. Because you're offering more than is required. You're, ask, you're, you're overdoing things because you're over communicating this to yourself. I need to do more. No, you don't. I need to say something. No, you don't. I need to go here and get this. No, you, you don't. You're over communicating. You're allowing the situation to create the narrative to you. You're allowing what you see to create the narrative instead of you create the narrative of who you are. Giving yourself more value. No, that's not who I am. I said, I had to say to myself, you know what? I'm getting ready to launch something here. 
and I want video production behind it. And I was about to do go into doing all of the video production myself with it. But I was like, no, 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 no. I take a page out of Eyal Van Zant's book. Stay in your lane. My lane is doing what I'm doing right now: teaching, guiding, inspiring, empowering, uplifting, encouraging, motivating. Opening your eye and your mind and expanding your awareness. This is my lane. It, to expand your awareness. To expand your sense of self. So that way you tap into your purpose. Which is already here and done and complete. And I was like, I could go do this project here and then do the video. And I was thinking about all the video and the software and stuff like that. I was like, no. No. Uh-uh. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. My lane, I can do a little bit of video play with my phone and stuff, but that's not my lane. And you see, what it is, is I'm lessening my value. I give, like I said, I'm a conservationist. I need to conserve my thoughts, my mind, my time, my energy to pour into what I love to do right here in this lane and bring it to you like I'm doing now. I'm a conservationist. I need to conserve. So I cannot give most of my time or energy or thoughts or all that other stuff to video production when there's people out there who is experts and masters in that. Let me go and hire them. I don't need to over communicate. I need to do this. See, that's me. I need to do this. No, that's me over communicating. I need to, I need to do video production. No, I don't. Why am I over communicating things to me that is not of value to me? See, I have to value myself first. And if I value myself, then I'm going to stick to what I do. The message, the lesson, the knowledge, the truth, the information. I'm going to stick to what I do. I'm going to teach it. I'm going to bring it. I'm going to formulate it. And I'm going to format it. And I'm going to bring it to you. That's what I do. I expand your awareness. I expand your consciousness. I expand your mind. I expand your heart. I expand your thoughts. I expand your being. I expand all that you are. That's what I do. That's my lane. That's where I'm valued at. And if the conversation doesn't render me helpless, like I surrender to this conversation because it's what I love. When I'm listening to Iyanla, when I'm listening to, I render myself helpless because I just want to soak in. I want to get in. I don't want to take notes. I want to be. I want it to get in my being. I don't want to take notes. I want this to get in my being. So it lodges itself within my consciousness and expands my mind. And then I can expand your mind. And I can expand your consciousness and expand your awareness. And bring you more of what I love to do. When I listen to speakers that I love to speak, love to hear speak. Um, Lisa Nichols, who I've actually opened up for uh, here in Tampa. Uh, me and Lisa Nichols. From the uh, documentary, the Se the secret, shared the stage together. Unbelievable! I was on stage with a mo. This was like this is like the Oprah of motivational speaking. That straight up, the she's the Oprah of motivational speaking. Black black woman, Lisa Nichols. And I was on stage with her. Got to do my thing, and she came up right, followed right behind me. It was a beautiful experience. Opened up for Dr. Cornell West, one of my other favorite speakers, philosopher, um, author, teacher at Princeton University. Signed my book. It was a beautiful book. Why? Because I stay in my lane. I don't over communicate who I am and who I'm not. I don't over communicate or create narratives. I stay in my lane and therefore I find myself in the lane with the like minded people that are of my cloth. This is how you begin to add value to yourself. Why? Because you find yourself amongst those people. Now, when people see you with those type of people, guess what? The price goes up, baby. Price goes up. I was on stage with Cornell West with Iyana, not Iyana, but Lisa Nichols. That must be coming to fruition. I might be opening up Iyana soon. Huh? Oh, man, who else? There's more. There's more I can give you. I can give you more. 
Yeah, I shared the stage with millionaires. I shared the stage with icons. I shared the stage with leaders. Why? Because I don't go out of my lane. I don't try to do or over communicate to myself. This is why it's called how to how to over how to stop over communicating your thoughts. I don't start to tell myself where else I can you understand? No, nah, I'm good right here. I'm going to be strong right here. So I'm not going to offer myself over to anything that is not adding more value to what I already am, what I already know, the truth about me, what I what I know about me, the truth I know about me, and truth that, that I am. I'm not about to over-communicate to me a narrative because I see somebody else doing it. And if he can do it, I can do it. So what? If he can do it, that's what he can do. Here's what I can do. Here's what I love doing. It's not about what I can't do. It's about what I can do that I love doing. And what I can do, I love doing. It ain't that I can't go out there and, and, and practice to become a, a, a gymnast because I can backflip. I ain't saying I'm going to be in the Olympics, but I can backflip, you know, with more practice and getting my body back in that shape. I can go box. I used to box. If I get my body back into that condition. Yeah, what I'm saying to you is I can tell myself a lot of things that I can do and can do it. But that's not my lane no more. It's not where I'm my that's not my expertise. That's not where I give the greatest value to myself. That's first. That's key. It has to give value to you. Because I knew who I was as a speaker. I valued that within me. I gave value to myself in that. I stayed in my lane and I found myself amongst Elisa Nichols. Because I gave myself value. I gave value to myself in that. That was what I was communicating to me. I wasn't over communicating what I could do and what I could. I would have missed the opportunities and I would have missed the chances. I would have missed the opportunities and I would have missed the chances. I am here to do what I was put here to do. To expand you. To expand your light and turn that light on. You have to know your worth. You have to know your truth. And you have to have the confidence that when you speak... You know it's adding value. Let's heal the matter, y'all. We're going to end this thing up right now. Let's heal the matter. We're healing these matters, these habits. Heal the habits. Let's heal the habit. Heal the matter. Believe only... What your heart says. And I'm not even finna expound. I'm just going to list off. Believe only what your heart says. Believe only what you know. Speak only what you know. That add value. It adds value. It doesn't have to add value to the conversation. It has to add value to you. Therefore, it adds value to the conversation. What you saying. Are you. When you. What you say. Ask yourself, are you adding value to you by saying this? Is this going to answer a question for you that's going to expand you more? See, when I'm when I'm asking a question, I'm asking the question so that I get an answer that adds value. I'm asking the question so that the answer adds value to me. I'm not just asking, you know, people people ask the speaker, how old are you? I don't want to know how old you are. I want to know this. I got another question for you. People always ask me when I'm on stage, how old are you? Why is that important? Don't you have a more important question than that? That can add value to you? See, some people don't value themselves in a sense. And they're not looking to add value. They're not looking to add value. So they don't value themselves. And so when they speak, 
They're not speaking to get value for themselves. You have to value yourself so that when you ask a question, it adds value back to you. If I'm asking a question to the speaker or whoever it is, it's got to add value to me and, and to the people in the room too. Because my consciousness is expanded. So when I, when I ask a question, I'm asking for the expansion of not only my mind, my, my being, but everybody else in the room. So when I ask a question, it's going to expand everyone's mind. The answer is going to come back and give and expand everyone. Are you asking? Are you asking expanding questions? Ask yourself that. Are you asking expanding questions? Questions that expand consciousness, that ex, that expands your consciousness. Are you asking conscious expanding questions so that you're adding value back to yourself? When you ask conscious expanding questions, that's you saying. I'm about to give value with this question. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm about to give value because I value to know this. I want to know this so that it adds value back to me. That's you value value in yourself. Speak only what you know adds value to you. This increases your self worth. Believe that you don't need. To offer more than what is asked. And let the store let let the what? Mm. Let the store man. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I guess I wanted to say, I guess I wanted to say. And let the story, the narrative create itself. That's what I wanted to say. I didn't put the why. Let the story or the narrative create itself. Stop over communicating. Creating a narrative that's not true, that's not been said, that's not been shown to you. You're over communicating and creating narratives that don't need to be created. And therefore, you lessen your worth, your value, your confidence. It all starts to deplete because you're asking questions. You're asking, and, 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 and what you're asking is creating a narrative back to you that may not be true. And I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this again. I'm gonna say this again. What someone says about you or think about you is none of your spiritual business. If someone is lying to you, that has so what? Now, I'm not talking about if you're a parent and your children are lying to you, you got to get the truth out of them. But I'm talking about people that 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 you I'm talking about people that you don't necessarily have to deal with. If I don't have to deal with you. You think I'm going to choose to put myself in this predicament if I don't have to? I choose to not have to. I choose the lesser. I choose to let me walk out of this, walk away from this. If I don't have to deal with you and I feel like you're lying to me, I'm not going to investigate your life to find out if you're lying. I don't care. That's me. You may care. That's you. I'm different from you. You're different from me. But I'm saying this to you to help you understand that if you have a fortified spirit, you wouldn't care either. If you had a fortified spirit, you wouldn't care either. You wouldn't care about what others are saying or what they're, what they're thinking. You would not care, beloved. If you had a fortified spirit, it would not matter if someone's lying to you. Because you don't allow that lie to create a narrative and begin to over communicate something in your thoughts to you that you feel is true when it's not or it's not true when it is. Why are you saying this? Why are you telling yourself that? Why are you over communicating this fathom, this, 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 this false, this falsehood to yourself, fathoming up this lie to you? Why are you over communicating that to yourself? You're only hurting you. You don't hurt me, you hurt too. Let the truth 
reveal itself. Truth crushed to earth shall rise again. Truth can never be crushed. Truth could never be crushed. There's a saying, truth crushed to earth shall rise again. You can never destroy the truth. You can never destroy the truth. It's going to surface. It's going to come out. People will know. You will know. The question is, do you value you or do you value the person that keeps lying? Keep not telling you the truth more than that over yourself. I value me more. So I'm not about to create a narrative. I'm not about to create a narrative to myself. I'm not about to create a narrative to myself. Believing what I'm not. I'm believing what I am. Because I am that I am. Okay? Okay? Now, let's close out with a breath. Let's close out with a breath. Inhale. Expand your consciousness. Exhale. Inhale again from the diaphragm. Some of you inhale just from the nose, like that, like you're sniffling. And some of you just inhale, you inhale from the some of you inhale from the chest. You should be inhaling from the pit. And you can feel it rise up the chest. Release. Do it one more time. Let it expand your consciousness. Release. I saw myself standing at the top of a mountain with a flag, wait, sticking it in the top of the mountain saying victory with that breath. Every time I do a breath exercise, it takes me somewhere. And I saw myself sticking a flag in the top of a mountain. Like I just climbed this major mountain. And it was a big victorious. I feel victorious. I feel very victorious in my life. I really do. I feel like I've won. I feel like I'm victorious. There's some things that has happened to me that is victorious right now. <sighs> Release the breath if you haven't already. But I'm thankful. I'm grateful. Okay, y'all. Be back tomorrow. I will be in Minnesota on the 1st. I will be back here tomorrow at 9. I love you. I love me. I love us. Ashe. Atone. And Amen. Be well and be light, beloved. And don't forget... Click the link in my bio to my website. You can order the book there. Or you can get your signed autographed copy right here with me. And I'll send it to you. Slide in my DM. Still handsome. Still look good. Still the beautiful. Still the glorious. the book. Peace. See you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Be well and be like.